Welcome to the University of Montevallo's 126th Founders Day celebration. And for those who are students here, you may not see it now, but the moments you're experiencing here at Montevallo will shape the rest of your life. Coming up on Valley Vision News, celebrating the senior class. We've got a full recap of this year's Founders Day festivities. Valley Vision News starts right now. Hello and welcome to Valley Vision News. I'm Esclavon Pruitt. And I'm Angel Saris. Thanks so much for watching. The University of Montevallo celebrated its 126th birthday at last week's Founders Day ceremony. Valley Vision News reporter Acidy Chavez joins us in the studio with a recap of last Thursday's ceremony. Acidy? UM holds Founders Day each October to celebrate University's original opening day, October 12, 1896. Founders Day is now a special day to recognize seniors and celebrate faculty and, and staff's accomplishments. After being held entirely outside last year because of pandemic, this year's ceremony was back to normal with the positions from Main Quad into Palmer Auditorium. In a long-standing tradition, Dr. Stewart recognized the students who found the crook which was hidden this year at the Center for the Arts. Dean Ruth Trust then led the seniors in the class pledge before they officially put on their graduation gowns for the first time. 2002 UF grad Blake Hudson delivered this year's keynote address. Hudson is now the Dean of the Cumberland School of Law at Stanford University. He spoke about the impact UM made on his life and how he was remained involved with the university. The moments I experienced at Montevallo developed such a deep love in my heart for this place that I continue to be involved. In 2011, I was fortunate to begin teaching environmental law related coursework during May term. I've since shifted to doing that online during the summer, but I'm so proud that Montevallo now has an environmental studies program led by the amazing Susan Kaplow. Uh, it provides students with a chance to be exposed to a field that I was unable to access even during my time at Montevallo. So the Montevallo moments keep getting better. Founders Day is often the unofficial beginning of the end for the seniors' class as they look ahead to graduation. For elementary education major Justin McMahon, this year's Founders Day was a memorable model moment. Today's ceremony was incredible. I uh, got to see a lot of my favorite professors uh, here being honored today. Such an incredible ceremony. Uh, absolutely beautiful. Several faculty members were also recognized for their outstanding achievements at UM. To see their awards presentation and to rewatch the entire Founders Day ceremony, check out the Mass Communication Program YouTube channel, Montevallo for You. Reporting live in the studio, I'm at City Chavez. Back to you. Thanks, Atsidi. The university also used this year's Founders Day to pay tribute to longtime UM postal carrier Charles Webb Jr. One, two, three. Cut. Yeah. 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 The U.S. Post Office is now named Dr. Webb. Charlie, as he was known around campus, delivered mail to every U.M. building from 1941 to 1977. At Thursday's dedication ceremony, many people recall Charlie's good sense of humor and dedication to his work. One of the things that struck me in our research was that Charlie it was stated that he always had a smile on his face. And I love that about people when you can smile and you enjoy your job. That's a great thing. And he was always on time. Over 35 years, always on time. You can visit the Charles Webb Jr. Post Office in Farmer Hall. Founders Day finished with a visit from Olympic gold medalist Vanetta Flowers. Please join me in a warm welcome to the one and only Vanetta Flowers. She was this year's featured guest speaker at the Dr. Wilson Fallon Jr. Lecture Series. The event took place in the Center for the Arts. UM students, faculty, and staff came out to hear her powerful message. I'm here to leave you with one special message. Everyone needs a push. You may be struggling in school, in a difficult relationship, or on the verge of just giving up. My suggestion to you is 
that you fight through the pain. Surround yourself with people that won't let you quit. Flowers became the first black athlete from any country to win gold in Olympic Winter Olympics when she competed in the women's bobsled in 2002. Remember, there's always more news 24-7 on our social media pages. Just search for Valor Vision News on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for more stories throughout the week. Still ahead on Valor Vision News, it's almost time to spring into registration. Find out when the schedule goes online and we can sign up for classes. Plus, a happily ever after for purples and golds. Look at some highlights from this year's College Night Review up next. We'll be right back. Create your future as a social media manager, filmmaker, journalist, and so much more with a degree in communication studies and mass communication. Visit montevallo.edu slash COFA for more information. You belong at Montevallo. Montevallo is ascending U.S. News and World Report's list of America's best colleges. As a top public university with small class sizes, we guarantee you'll get a valuable education with plenty of personal attention. Visit you belong at montevallo.com to learn more. The 2022 College Night Review, Once Upon a College Night, took place on Friday. It was a mashup of old College Night classics performed by alumni from both purple and gold sides. Palmer Auditorium once again served as the backdrop for a College Night performance, but this one was a bit different than usual. It had all of the pre-show excitement of a sweet Saturday from both sides doing cheers and even circling up but it turned out to be far more about unity and love of the tradition, with side spirit and passion on full display. Sophomore gold member Cole Broadhead loved the collaboration between the two sides. Well, it's nice to see all of the different types of alumni that come around, and even though that we're on opposing sides, it's good to see how both sides can come together to create a review of everything that's honorable about the College Night history. The event was made possible by the College Night Endowment Fund. Folks around campus are still talking about the theater's recent production of Ugly Lies the Bone. The five-person play was about a Brown War veteran that returns home to deal with the broken relationships and PTSD. They experimented with virtual reality projections and special effects makeup to create a truly immersive experience. The innovative set design was able to push the limits with joint efforts from director Bart Pitchford and mass communications assistant professor Dr. Stephanie Dean. Alongside professors, this play was a filled with a hardworking and dedicated crew that took this as a learning experience. I didn't know how much projections will be used throughout this entire show and I'm very surprised about how like how cool they can look and like all the things you can do with it. If you missed Ugly Lies the Bone, make sure to catch the theater's department next production, Punk Rock Girl, later this semester. Registration for spring and summer 2023 is just around the corner. The schedule will be viewable online on October 18th. Registration opens for graduate students on October 31st and seniors and those with priority registration on November 2nd. It then opens for juniors and athletes November 4th with sophomores following on the 8th and freshmen on the 10th. Remember, you must meet with your advisor before you can register. Finally, today, good news for students who like to stay up to study. Attention, Carmichael Library will be closing in 15 minutes. Although the top two floors of the library is still closed at midnight, the bottom floor will now remain open to students 24 hours each week from Sunday through Wednesday. The schedule change is welcome news to night owls who don't want to study in their dorm room. I have the problem of like associating sleep from studies, so I have to like go elsewhere and I find that kind of late at night, this is kind of the place to go because it's quiet and not really anybody bothers you, so. Bring the UMID to access the bottom floor of the library after midnight. Late night access is only available to UM students. Remember, there's always more news from our reporters on our website. Visit valorvisionnews.wordpress.com to see more stories throughout the week. That's all the time we have for today's show. Thanks for watching and be sure to tune in to Valovision News again next time.